I'd like to welcome everyone to the Imagine Living in a Socialist USA. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Imagine Living in a Socialist USA book launch. We're so happy to be here at the beautiful Housing Works bookstore in Lower Manhattan. Our thanks to them for hosting us and a big thanks to the able and helpful staff at HarperCollins for having faith in our book and working so hard with us to promote it. For those of you who haven't seen this book yet or don't know what it's about, I thought I would read a blurb written about it by Glenn Ford, who's the executive editor of the Black Agenda Report. This will give you a feel of what's coming tonight and what's in the book. The death of capitalism sooner rather than later is a certainty. Yet scenarios for transition to socialism, the only system that can save humanity from the accumulated contradictions of its past are both scarce and often so generalized as to be useless to those locked in today's desperate struggles. How does the great human constellation make the epical break from our particular spaces in the here and now? In answering this question, socialists must apply universal principles to a whole world of particularities, starting with the movements in which they are directly engaged. Imagine living in a socialist USA has gathered under one cover some of the most gifted thinkers and activists of the American left, men and women for whom socialist is the compass that points to radical transformation, a world put on new footing, snatched back from the precipice. I couldn't agree more. At tonight's event, you will be hearing from the three edi editors of Imagine Living in a Socialist USA, Francis Golding. <laughs> Michael Smith, and me, Debbie Smith, and, and five of our wonderful uh, contributors out of the 32 contributors. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. I've been a socialist since going to college in Boston in the radical 60s. It was in Boston that the atmosphere provided and encouraged everyone to question society's assumptions. I worked full-time for the anti-Vietnam War movement, the Kent State Legal Defense Fund, the feminist union and socialist movements. I'm a longtime supporter of the Brecht Forum, the New York Marxist School, and I still participate in the anti-capitalist and pro-democracy movements that are growing so rapidly. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about Francis. I love Francis. <laughs> Francis heard the word socialist when she was 18, and to her it sounded like a great idea. She got married at 20, her activism began, and at age 89, it hasn't stopped yet. I can tell you, she is a dynamo. In 1959, she helped organize New York's Lower East Side community, the Beach City Development Czar Robert Moses, and save the Cooper Square neighborhood and its tens and its thousands of residents from urban renewal. She founded the Francis Golden Literary Agency almost 40 years ago, and it's still going strong, favoring books that help change the world. Now she says, let's free Mumia. Francis, why did you want to do this book? Well, I was feeling pretty, okay, I've got it. Can you hear me? I was feeling pretty despondent because Rosa Luxemburg once said, give me socialism or give me, what's the word? Barbarism. Barbarism. <laughs> and we can't, it's built into the system. It also is built into the system, its demise. And 
that's what we're beginning to feel the possibility for. Um, so much that we worked for, so much that we gained, was crumbling before my eyes. Taking charge of women's bodies was done through legislation. With more than half of the people in Congress and the Senate being millionaires, how can they reflect what our problems are? There's no way. There's no connection that between the legislators and the majority of the people. Um, what I thought we had won the right to vote through the countless struggles of black people in the South. And all of a sudden, the, the Republicans realize that blacks and Hispanics are not going to vote for them. So they simply, with the help of the Koch brothers, isn't it Koch? Koch. 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 Okay. They, they, they plan new laws, and the new laws prevent them from voting. Are we going to let that happen? No, absolutely, no way, no way. So this was happening. All of these reversals of what we had gained was happening. And I could see, I don't know about barbarism, but I sure saw smelled fascism. And I felt one of the problems is that people are completely ignorant about what socialism really is. They just are told that it's foreign, that it's evil, that it's anti-democratic, and I thought, we really need to tell them the truth. And so I surrounded myself with many of my own clients and many of my dear friends like Fran Piven and Blanche Wiesen Cook and you know all those wonderful writers who are also leftists. And I said, why don't we write a book that tells the people what socialism really can be like for our lives? And not one of them said no. Not one of them charged a penny. All of this was done by the goodness of their heart and their wonderful brains. And they contributed these fabulous documents which made up our terrific book, which is here tonight. Uh, I uh, want you to know that not only were they the ones who didn't charge, but Mike, Debbie, and I will not make one penny on this book. I think that Harper Collins was very reluctant to do this book. They said, no, this is not for us. Can you believe they said it doesn't tell both sides of the story? <laughs> Indeed, it does not. The rest of the story is told by the media, it's told by the world. We're going to tell the truth, not the baloney crap that comes from the major uh, media. So I said to, they said, no, we can't do that book. It's, a, it's not balanced. <laughs> I said, you know, you did a book which was a pure piece of shit. <laughs> it was called The Hundred Worst Americans and included Barbara Kingsolver and other Harper authors who were slightly liberal or more so. Thank you. I said, you did that book and you should be ashamed of yourself. We gave you, my agency gave you the best fiction writer in the country in the name of Barbara Kingsolver. My, my agency gave you a book which next to the Bible sold the most called Good Night Moon. Right now on the bestseller list of the New York Times is another of our books, which is simply wonderful, the, Go the Golem and the Genie. And you have the nerve to say no to me? How dare you? <laughs> that, was the third, that was the third appeal. And the vice president wrote back and said, your passion and your persistence has won out. We'll do it. Now, all the lefty publishers wanted to do this book. They were banging on my door saying, we'll print it tomorrow. But this book needed money. It needed marketing. It needed money. And